Hello class, um, this is a review for your upcoming uh, midterm exam 2 for Physics 4A at Foot Hill Community College. Now in this session, um, we will discuss the questions um, given to you in your practice exam. I will be brief, but I will try as much as possible to be concise and give you the facts as well as what I feel that will help you in the upcoming test. The very first question has to do with centripetal force and centripetal acceleration. Now we know that an object moving around in a circle has a centripetal acceleration and by Newton's second law of motion, any object has an acceleration which is a consequence of a net force acting on that object. So the force responsible for the object moving around in a circle is what we call the centripetal force. Now the most important thing you need to note about the centripetal force is unlike any other force such as normal force or friction, the centripetal force is a resultant force that compels an object to move in a circular path. Let me say that again. The centripetal force is always a resultant force that compels an object to move in a circular path. Now let's look at the problem before us. We have two masses, one and two, that are moving around in a circle with the same angular velocity omega. So the question says, suppose the mass of the hanging block is kept constant and the angular speed of block one and two increased. Describe qualitatively, that is using words, and quantitatively, that is using math, which of the string breaks first. Now, to, to describe the object qualitatively, we have two masses. This is one, and this is two. Now, if you look at mass one and two, you will discover that mass one is acted upon by two forces. You have the inner tension T1 and the outer tension T2. Mass 2 is acted upon just by one force, which is the outer tension T2. So, and we know that the direction of the net force is towards the center. This means automatically that T1 is greater than T2. And if T1 is greater than T2, it means that the inner string has a greater propensity to break compared to the outer string. Now, so the, 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 the best reason, one of the, the best reasons for you to, to, to see is that object one is acted upon by the by two forces you have the inner tension and the outer tension while object two is acted upon just by one single force the outer tension by virtue of this fact it means that the inner tension is greater than the outer tension because the resultant force is directed towards the center of the circle Therefore, the inner string will break first compared with the outer string. Mathematically, you will see that the summation of F, which will be equal to T1 minus T2, will be equal to M R omega squared. This would mean that T1 is equal to T2 plus M R omega squared. Similarly, for 2, you have the summation of F, which is just equal to T2. This will be equal to M 
to r omega squared therefore t2 is just gonna be equal to 2 m r omega squared if you substitute the values into the first equation this is equation 1 and this is equation 2 you will end up with t1 equal to 2 m r omega squared plus m r omega squared which will be equal to 3 m r omega squared clearly t1 is greater than t2 which means that string 1 breaks first Now, the next question says that we need to determine the acceleration of the system. Determine the centripetal acceleration of the system of block 1 and 2 in terms of the acceleration due to gravity. Now, remember that T1, T1 is equal to 3 mR omega squared now if you look at block the hanging block this is mg this is t1 and this block is virtually at rest which means that t1 is gonna be equal to mg hence we have 3 m r omega squared equal to mg the m's constant, which means that r omega squared is equal to g divided by 3. And a, which is the centripetal acceleration, is equal to r omega squared, which will be equal to g divided by 3. In other words, the centripetal acceleration of the system is the acceleration due to gravity divided by 3. The next question actually goes as follows. Now suppose a coin of mass M placed on a rough turntable exactly at the rim, a distance R from the center. The turntable turns at constant angular speed omega and the coin rides without slipping. Suppose the coefficient of static friction between the turntable and the coin is given by mu. Let g be the acceleration due to gravity. Derive an expression for the maximum angular speed such that the coin does not slip as it rotates. So let's say we have our turntable. Let me choose a different color. Let's say we have our turntable. This is the coin of mass M and uh, here is our axis of rotation. It rotates right there with an angular speed omega. The distance from here to here is R. So let's do the free body diagram for the object. This is mg. This is the normal force. Now it is interesting for you to note that Static friction provides the centripetal force required by the coin to rotate in a circular path. So, um, this means that, keep in mind, that the summation of Fy is equal to Fn minus mg, which is equal to zero. This means that Fn is equal to mg.
In other words, the normal force on the coin is equal to the weight of the coin. This is the direction of our increasing R. And that is our z-axis. Sorry. This is our y-axis. And uh, let me say this is our x-axis to make things simple since we deal with x and y on a daily basis. Now the summation of fx will be equal to mu s and this is equal to m v squared all divided by r. Another way to express this, remember v is equal to r omega. This would mean that fs is equal to m r omega squared. But what is the definition of, of static friction? Static friction fs is equal to mu s fn, which will be equal to mu s mg. This therefore means that mu s mg is equal to m r omega squared. The m's cancel and therefore omega uh, by definition, sorry please, by, by definition this is not true. Uh, this is a common mistake. Um, by definition fs is less than or equal to mu s mg. This is because fs is a limiting friction force therefore I'm gonna erase all of this therefore we have m r omega squared less than or equal to mu s multiplied by mg M's cancel and therefore omega squared will be less than or equal to mu s g divided by r. Hence omega max the maximum angular speed that the turntable must have so as to maintain The coin address will be given by the square root of mu s g all divided by r. Isn't this beautiful? And this is the response I expected from you.